When I was 17 years old, my mother was worried about me, which was, you know, normal. But this was a special day. And so she took both my hands, she looked me right in the eye, and she said, Arnold, you can be anything you want to be. You just need to believe in yourself and work hard. Have you ever heard that? Well, apparently a lot of people have, because if you search believe in yourself and work hard, you get 646 million results. I had no idea my mom told so many people. <laughs> anyway, when she gave me that advice, it was special because we just learned that she had cancer and only a few months to live. And she was worried about me and wanted the best for me. So I wanted to make her feel better, and I promised that I would follow her advice. And not only that, that I would use it to make the world a better place, a better place and live the life of my dreams. I said it with such conviction, she believed me. And that made her happy and gave her peace of mind. Well, for the past 30 years since she died, I've been trying to figure out how to follow that advice and keep my promise. And I've got to be honest with you, it hasn't been easy. And sometimes it's been downright painful. I probably would have been better off saying, I promise to live a good life. That might have been okay. But I promise to live the life of my dreams. And so it took a while to figure it out. But now I have an approach that works for me, and I'd like to share it with you so that you can become who you want to be faster and easier and without all the heartache and struggle that I went through. Does that sound good? Yeah. All right. So I call it the fun model of change. And this is the story to help you understand how to use it in your own life. It started on my 19th birthday around midnight. I was lying in bed, trying to figure out how do I keep this promise when I had this brilliant idea. I would be a rock star. <laughs> I was so inspired by this idea, I jumped out of the bed and I ran downstairs and I grabbed my friend's guitar and I sat down on the couch and I started playing and singing and I was composing a song to the moon as if somehow I could become a rock star that very night. Three things became clear to me. One, I didn't know how to play the guitar. <laughs> Two, I couldn't sing in tune. And three, it's really hard to believe in yourself when there's no evidence that you can be what you want to be. It's really hard. Have you ever noticed that? Like, no matter what your goal is, whether you want to be an internet sensation or a professional athlete or just get a better job, any time that you want to become someone that you're not, you will be confronted with the fact that there's no proof that you can do it. So a goal like that requires faith. Faith is the firm belief in something for which there is no proof. And the bigger your goal, the more faith you need. So faith is the F and the first step in the fun model of change. But faith isn't something you own like a hat. Like, oh, look, faith. Got that now. Unfortunately, it doesn't work that way. You need to keep generating faith until you've become who you want to be. Becoming someone new triggers fear. And fear is the number one thing that prevents us from achieving our goals. Now, faith conquers fear. But it's really hard to keep generating faith day after day unless you're taking action. Because you'll believe it when you see it. The more that you do a thing, the more that you are that. Think about it, when do you become something? Like when are you a runner? When you're running. 
So the U in the fun model of change stands to for update. To become someone new, you update what you do. It's a little rhyme I created. <laughs> you have to update your habits, what you do, what you think, and what you believe. And this is the hard work portion of my mom's advice, because you won't feel like doing it. Updating is always uncomfortable, and it automatically comes with fear and doubt. So you need to know how to deal with those things. So when I was updating, I started with going to musical theater school, and I learned to sing and dance and be great on stage, and I went and did all kinds of performances to all kinds of people. I even sang background vocals on Michael Bublé's first album, Babalu. Right? <laughs> to the world, I had become a singer. But I didn't believe it. I still felt like that teenager who couldn't sing in tune. I kept thinking, what would you think if I sang out of tune? Would you stand up and walk out on me? So I was insecure. And when I went on auditions, it really hampered my ability to get a job. You might have felt like that too, like, I know I can do this, but somehow I don't feel good enough. Have you ever thought about where that feeling comes from? So one day I went on this audition, and it gave me a clue about these feelings that hold you back. I was invited to audition for the opera Aida, and they had invited several men from the musical theater community to come and audition because they needed more male dancers. But in the invitation, they specifically said, don't worry, you don't need to be a dancer, you just need to move well. <laughs> well, I could do that, so I went. It turned out to be the hardest dance audition I had ever been to. They were asking us for moves that even the best dancers in the country would struggle to do. I was so embarrassed to be failing so miserably in front of my peers, and I had all these feelings of inadequacy. Had I known that's the way it was going to be, I never would have gone. But then something happened. I got angry, and I thought, I refuse to be embarrassed. So I just stopped trying to do their moves perfectly, and I just did what I did. And if they didn't like it, I didn't care. Well, ironically, this led to my first professional contract as an artist. <laughs> For the first time, my feelings, I wasn't at the mercy of them. I had taken control and created my own feeling, and that had dramatically changed my results. No pun intended. So I came to realize something incredibly powerful. One is that those feelings of fear and insecurity weren't coming from me. And two is I had the power to change the way I feel. Like there was two kinds of feelings, ones that happened to me and ones I could create. And I knew that if I wanted to be successful, I would have to get really good at creating feelings and overcome the idea of just reacting to them. I was beginning to learn who I actually was, that those thoughts and feelings were just ways I had responded to the world in the past. They were just habits. And in fact, I learned that my personality was just really my habitual way of being, and I had the power to change that. Habits are just programs your mind runs, and I learned that I'm not the programs, I'm the programmer. And as the programmer, I can write any program I want to. I learn to observe my thoughts and feelings instead of being my thoughts and feelings. Instead of saying, I'm so nervous, it was, hmm, my body's really reacting nervously now. And from this place of observation, I could choose how I wanted to respond. 
That's how you create new habits instead of being ruled by your old ones. Every time you choose a new action, you are becoming someone new to the world. The more that you do a thing, the more that you are that. But when does change happen? So the N in the fun model of change stands for now. Now is the only time, the only moment you have power over. Now you can choose. Now is when change happens. If you're spending your time worrying about the future or dwelling on the past, you are missing an opportunity to be who you want to be right now. Ultimately, the performing life wasn't for me. And I had to update myself several times as I searched to live the life of my dreams. And I'll give you some examples of how you can use the model to recreate yourself. I, I went from being a performer to a business development manager where I helped a company double their sales three years in a row. From business development to people development, where I learned to create a culture of appreciation so people went from, I can't do this anymore, to, I love my job. And then I quit my high-paying, secure job to go and be a consultant for the opportunity to do that for many companies and volunteered for community organizations to see, can I have that big of an impact on the world? But every time I had to update my thoughts and beliefs, I had doubts and fear. But I was also learning to have fun. So that process got easier and shorter. And now I really believe what my mom said that I can be anything I want to be. So why not a global influencer, right? Now I've taken on the biggest, most ambitious task yet. I want to help our society feel more connected. So my company built an app that helps people develop habits of happiness and human connection because there's one thing I know for sure, if we, are going to solve the problems of the world, we are going to have to work together. Now, I'm right in the middle of that update, so it's very uncomfortable, and there's lots of fear and doubt, but I would never have taken on that kind of a task if I didn't know how to have fun. When you're afraid or worried or have doubts, have fun. Have faith that you can do it. Update yourself through action. And focus on the change that you can make right now. I spent way too much of my life worrying about the future or beating myself up for what I did or didn't do. And my recommendation is if you're doing that, stop it. Have fun instead. Fun enhances every cognitive and physiological response we have. It's called the fun model for a reason. It won't only teach you how to follow my mom's advice, it will also remind you to enjoy every day. Because life is too short to be miserable. So when you have fun, fear won't stop you, past failures won't stop you, worry won't stop you, you will be in action enjoying each day as you build the life of your dreams. So, now we all know how to follow my mom's advice. And the only thing left to do is have fun. So let's do it!